Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, I'm now going to be going through question uh, questions from the M1 Mechanics paper of October 2022 from the International A Level LXL um, Examining Board. And this, I'm going to start going through these questions one by one. I'm going to save each question on a separate video so I can save the questions topic wise as well as paper wise. So. Um, let's get started straight away. Question number one: We have a railway track, uh, a railway truck, sorry, S of mass 20 tons, is moving along a straight horizontal track when it collides with another railway truck T of mass 30 tons, which is at rest. Immediately before the collision, the speed of S is 4 meters per second. As a result of the collision, the two railway trucks join together. We got to find the common speed of the railway trucks immediately after the collision. So let's just make a little diagram to illustrate what's happening. So I'm going to put a before and after diagram. So before you have a truck which is moving towards another truck. Okay, let's just draw a little kind of rectangle and another rectangle. Okay. So this is S. Okay, and this is T. All right, S has a mass of 20 tons. Okay, so 20 tons, that's 20,000 kilograms. I'll just write 20 tons for now. Okay, 20 tons, and this is 30 tons. Okay, before the collision, this is moving at a speed of 4 meters per second in this direction. And this is stationary. Okay, after the collision, what happens is, those two objects are basically... They become one. So these two objects, which were separate, okay, they now become one object. So it's like they are combined together as one object. Okay, they collide and they move with a common speed, okay, which we have to find. So that's V. Now we can say that com combined together, these are now become 50 tons together. All right, so what we can say is that the total momentum before and the total momentum after the collision must be the same, the conservation of momentum. Okay, so we can say that the, the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. So what's the total momentum before the collision? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, this direction as positive. So we can see that for S, its momentum before the collision is its mass times its velocity. So it's 20 tons. We can write that 20,000 times 4 plus, and here you're going to have 30,000 times its velocity, which is 0. And that's equal to the total momentum after the collision, which is 50,000 times v what we have to find okay so this gives, this is going to give us 80,000 um, 80,000 plus zero so it's 80,000 basically this is going to become zero so you have 80,000 is equal to 50,000 v we can cancel out the thousand um, right so you can you can divide by in fact 10,000 so you'll end up with v is equal to 8 over 5 which is 1.6 meters per second. So that's the speed. You can say the speed, they don't care about the direction, just the speed is 1.6 meters per second after the collision. So there's the answer to part A of this question. The common speed of the railroad trucks immediately after the collision. Okay, now, then it says the magnitude of the impulse exerted on S in the collision, stating the units of your answer. So the impulse exerted by on S is going to be in this direction. And it's going to be, the impulse is a thing which basically causes the motion of S to change. So if we think about what S was before the collision, if you consider S, we can think about its, this, its initial speed before the collision was, um, as we saw here, 4 meters per second. Okay, and its final speed after the collision was in the same direction but reduced to 1.6 meters per second 
and its mass, as we were told, is 20,000 kilograms. We have to talk about in terms of SI units. So we know that the impulse is basically the, the change in momentum. Okay, so it's m times the change in speed. Okay, so the impulse is going to be its mass, which is 20,000, times the change in speed, which is 1.6 minus 4. So this will give us the impulse. So you have 20,000 times 1.6 minus 4, which gives us minus 48,000. Minus 48,000 newton seconds that's the that's units of impulse now we want the magnitude of the impulse all right so we just say that the impulse okay um exerted on s its magnitude is forty eight thousand newton seconds okay we know that it's in this direction the impulse is in the opposite direction to it's moving because that's what caused it to slow down but they don't care about the direction here they just care about the magnitude and we need to state the units of our answer. So that, that's fine for the answer here. And that completes question number one. Um, okay, that completes the, 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 the answer for this question. All right. Um, it, would be, it would have been also possible to find the common speed of the particles after the collision by considering the impulse as well. Because the impulse exerted on S is equal to the impulse exerted on um, t. So we could have actually done it that way. We could have found the impulse first and said that the if we look at the change of, of t, you can say the impulse is equal to the mass times its change in velocity. And you can say that the impulse we know for t is, if we take this direction as positive, would have been 48,000 in this direction, equals its mass, which is 30,000, times the final velocity, which we have to find, minus its initial velocity, which was zero. So that should give us the same answer, 48,000 divided by 30,000. Okay, which gives us, that's going to be 1.6. If you do 48 divided by 30, you get exactly the same answer, 1.6. So we could actually find the answer for the final speed okay, of the whole you know um you know the two two things um, after the collision basically by considering the speed of uh, considering the change in momentum of t so that's an alternative way to work out um the speed by using the impulse okay so you can use the change in momentum we can even use impulse but in that case you'd have to answer part b first and then use it to answer part a but that's mm -hmm. perfectly fine that's also another alternative way of answering part a okay considering the change in momentum all right, so that concludes question number one from this paper, October 2022. Um, other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist that you can find by clicking on the link over here. Other questions from the uh, subject of momentum and impulse can be found in the playlist that will be in this um, area over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.